By the end of this video, you will be a professional at split designs. If you do not have access to Adobe Illustrator, you can follow these same steps in Microsoft Word. The first thing that we need to do is size our artboard. Because I'm using a standard office size printer, I need the width to be eight and a half inches and the height to be 11. That is your standard paper for a standard printer. To ensure we are getting high quality prints, make sure your color mode is selected as CYMK and that you are in high resolution 300 PPI. When we talk about our graphic designs, we need to ensure that they are high quality. You can find these on Creative Fabrica, purchase them from small creators on Etsy, or even design your own. Some things you should make sure is that they are very high resolution and that they do have a transparent background. Although sublimation does not print white, sometimes this causes a little bit of ghosting, some discoloration, and even some fogging. So just make sure that those two boxes are checked and then insert your graphic. Here you will have to resize it. It's going to upload however the designer puts it out. Of course, this one is way too large for us to be creating. And if you are designing for an adult size shirt, the standard size is about 10 to 11 inches in width, depending on the size of the shirt. This is actually going on in adult large, so I will be using 10 and a half inches. Now you can zoom out or fit this however you would like, but we need two of these images placed side by side. When you do copy and paste it, make sure that both of these are completely centered and lined up perfectly. It's going to save you a lot of headache and ensure that everything fits together seamlessly during the printing process. We can only work one design at a time, but the crop image feature is going to become our best friend. So make sure that you only have the left hand side graphics selected and then right click and select crop image. Then you will see a black box appear around your graphic. And in the top center, there is a little bar that you can drag and drop. Bring this down about halfway through your graphic design. You'll notice that top section is a bit more transparent. And once you click out or select enter, it will disappear completely. Now we have one portion of our split design complete and we are ready to move on to the next. The same method is applied. Right click, select crop image, but this time we are going to be working from that bottom center line. You will drag it and drop right into that center line. And as you can see, it should click together. That way you know that it is seamless and there is no overlap. That's why it was super important to line these up in the beginning. And if you didn't do that, make sure you pause, head back, because it's going to save you so much time and headache. If you're a thinker like me, you're probably questioning, well, these are still 10 and a half inches wide and the paper is only eight and a half. So of course we need to go over and basically make this in landscape mode, but we just change the angle to 90 degrees. Then it's going to turn it and we can make sure that it fits seamlessly on our paper. Of course, this is going to be two separate prints, but you do want to make sure that of course they do fit on the paper. Please, please, please do not skip this step. Because there is text or wording in this design, we have to mirror our image so that it shows up perfectly when we actually press our design. This is specifically for sublimation. This is actually super easy. You will just right click and then hit transform and reflect. It should reflect at a 90 degree angle, but if anything else is put in that box, make sure you select 90 degrees and then okay. It is completely reflected, but you cannot skip this step. It has to be done on both pieces of your graphic design or they are not going to line up seamlessly. By the way, you are doing amazing. We are halfway through and right at the printing process and you've made it. So the printing process is super easy, but I am going to give you a little freebie here and walk you through a couple steps to ensure you are getting the highest color saturation and most true to tone colors. Now, if you want some presets that are just standard inside your computer and you don't have to go through this process every time, check out my website, Kaylee Sue Vinyl. You'll find four presets that I've come up with and they work perfectly. Okay back to the printing process. You need to go down to the bottom once your printer is selected and select more settings. Then we need to go over to paper quality. Go down and select semi glossy. This is super important. It's really going to give you that true to tone ink saturation that we need. Then you need to go into advanced. You should never be using normal print settings and always high quality print settings. Both of these little changes are gonna make huge impacts in your actual print. And this is not going to just stay this way. You're going to have to go back in every single print and readjust those. It can be a little pain in the butt, but I promise you, as soon as you print this, you're going to notice the biggest difference. Something to note is when you are using higher quality print settings, the print is going to take a bit longer to complete. That is totally normal and actually what we are looking for. 
Like I said, the only thing that prints is on your artboard. So the section that has already been printed, drag that into the gray area and the section that you're needing to print, drag that onto the whiteboard. You will follow the same print steps for this option, which are make sure that your correct printer is selected, scroll all the way down to more settings, and then you need to change your paper quality. Select semi-gloss and then go down to advanced, change your quality from normal to high settings, and you have completed the hardest step, at least in my opinion. Now it's time to actually get to the pressing process and make sure you save this video because you can come back every single time. This isn't something you have to watch once and are expected to remember for the rest of your life. I promise I am here to continuously walk you through the process. We're going to all succeed here. Okay, let's get into the fun part. Friends, the only, only, only time I ever recommend using a 50% polyester blend is if the shirt is white. If it is any other color, please make sure it is 65% or more. Now, because this shirt is white and the design is pretty dark, although it is going to fade, it is actually going to be pretty bold still, so that's why we get away with it. Anyways, this is the Gildan brand. I do like them a lot. They do feel more like a cotton rather than that sticky, clingy, nasty feeling. And here I'm just showing you that the standard print size, although 10 and a half inches seems super big, when it's laid out on the shirt, it's actually perfect. This roller is a little unique. It's actually for pressing t-shirts. So that's why it's a little confusing there, but just for a visual appeal, I wanted to give you a little bit of an idea. Okay, now it's time to grab our prints and you're going to see how in the heck are we lining these up? And you are not going to press these two times. I promise that's way too much hassle than you need. So what you actually need is a pair of scissors. In this first design, we need to cut it very, very close to the actual design. Make sure you don't cut off a design, but the tricky part is making sure that you don't leave any white space in between because of course that's not going to press and then you're going to see a line of demarcation. So if you are ready, grab your scissors and I'm going to show you exactly how I achieve this. Now I sped this up just a little bit in our video, but make sure you go slow. And if you have a paper cutter on hand, make sure you use it. It's going to be your best friend. I'm guilty, my paper cutter, I do have it used, but there's a little bit of stickiness on the blade so it wasn't working. I made one flop before and had to reprint these, so just make sure that your blades are sharp and that you are using enough patience so that you don't miss anything because this line is going to be very important to line up. Now the second design, we do not wanna cut it as close to the design, but you do wanna take off some of that border. When there's an overlap there, sometimes it can get a little bit of decoloration because the pressure is not consistent with the rest of the image. Lining up our design just takes a little bit of patience, but I promise it is easy to achieve. I wanna say that this is a quote unquote hack, so it's not ever going to be 100% perfect, but there are ways to make sure that it is pretty seamless and that you can't really tell that these have been merged together. These front two pieces of tape are just a tack strip, I would say, because you do want to turn this over and then completely tape down the back. One thing to mention, do not ever go into a project using anything other than heat transfer tape, scotch tape, plastic tape, any of the painter's tapes. They're all going to melt into your press and or project and completely destroy the project. Ask me how I know. I promise I've wasted more money than I would even like to admit. Once that back is completely secured, it's time to go into the front and remove those two pieces of tack strip. Now this was just kind of placing these together so that we could work on the back, but if you leave these on the front, it can cause some discoloration, especially on white t-shirts. And then on the sides here, I do like to cut these apart. That way there's not any of that white box around it. I don't know. I just think that this actually helps out the design and make sure that in the pressing process, there's not any weird edges around. Plus it actually makes it a lot easier to line these up. Now for me, I use an automatic heat press from HTV Ron. If you're looking for a good heat press, I recommend this one, but I also recommend purchasing that little red pad on the bottom. It's a rubber 15 by 15 heat pad because the foam pad that they come with actually will ruin your sublimation projects because it makes the pressure very inconsistent. We are going in at 380 degrees for 45 seconds. For light and especially white colored t-shirts, don't ever touch these with 400 degrees. That's why you're getting that yellow discoloration, which is also called scorching. It will completely ruin your projects. Another thing that we should do because these are white colors is make sure you protect the inside of the t-shirt. I use copy paper because it's super cheap and honestly I just reuse this because ghosting is minimal to actually visibly see but when it's on the t-shirt it is super visible. Anyways what I was trying to say is I take all this copy paper at the end and then just recycle it through my actual printer and it's totally fine. Okay protecting the inside 
is your key, but protecting the outside is also a huge step because sometimes ink saturation will get onto your heat element and then transfer onto other projects. We always start with a quick press. Don't press this too long. You don't want to overheat the white colored shirt. I press this for about seven seconds. That just removes any moisture, which is very important, and also removes any wrinkles because if there are wrinkles, it's going to destroy your project. At this point, take a moment to make sure that your t-shirt is completely centered. The center, across the armpits, and that everything is nice and neat. Then fold back that collar and your collar section should actually be right at the edge of where that heat press starts. Then grab your design. And at this point, it is time to center. I like to just flip it over with the design to give me a visual idea, and then I will turn it over. Now from the collar down to the design, it's usually about four to three finger widths. Now my fingers are pretty small, so I do like to use about four inches so that this doesn't look like it's creeped all the way up into the neckline. Then you will center these designs. Now don't go off of that centered tape line because I don't know that this is 100% centered, but what I do like to do is go and fold my paper in half, not crease it, just lightly fold it, and then place it down so that I can center it with the centered color line and make sure that everything is seamless. Now, please listen, some people use tape to tape these down, make sure they're not going to move around. I promise you, if you are not being heavy handed and throwing this thing around, that design's not going anywhere. And when you put tape onto a white shirt, you get a lot of weird discoloration and sometimes it washes out and sometimes it doesn't. So I just avoid tape altogether. Before you press, make sure that you are protecting your shirt, your element and the design. You will place over your copy paper. It can be butcher paper. It can be whatever works best for you. But what it can't be is reuse copy paper and or Teflon sheets. Those both absorb ink and they are going to transfer. Although the ghosting is minimal, you can still see that ink has been saturated into the copy paper and that is going to ghost onto your next project. So make sure you slide those over to the side and recycle them however you feel fit. In my experience, these come out pretty seamlessly every time, as long as I'm working with my patients. Now, I know that it looks like there's a little bit of dark coloration on the outside of that shirt. It's actually just because of the pad underneath, and you'll see that at the end. But a few things to mention, do not ever reuse your print graphics. It looks like there's ink, but there's actually not enough saturation to go on to another shirt. And then once again, these copy papers should never be reused. Now that this is pulled away, you will see there is none of that weird discoloration. And from a glance, this looks almost perfect, but I would say it's about 90%. Of course, this is a quote unquote hack, so it's never going to be 100% perfect. This method is a great way to utilize large scale designs without investing into a large scale printer. Now, I hope that I did my diligence today and walked you through this process so it was super easy and made you feel confident enough to go out and try this for yourself.